So Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 22. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. That's all I want to say. Ladies, I thought I'd make y'all laugh for a second because the moment women here submit to your husbands, you see them here. <laughs> Seen a few of y'all throw me some gang times. Make me go ghetto again on you. <laughs> Boy. Um, we'll read the whole passage. So, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, also, Christ is the head of the church, just like Christ is. He is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Verse 25, husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Let me pause right there. When we start talking about the roles of a husband and wife, how many of you would agree that what we see in movies and hear in music and what our culture present is absolutely not consistent with the Word of God? Would you raise your hand? Okay, so stop taking cues from the world. That's the first thing. If you're here today, what we're about to talk about and hear the rest of the day, you have to determine in your heart. You have to determine, do you really want to follow God's plan? Because you can hear, hear, hear. That's why I love what the scripture says, don't be just a hear, but do it. You know, and I'm telling y'all from the perspective, um, raise your hand if you don't know my story. Just raise your hand real high if you've never heard about my story. All right. Well, let me tell you, I'm not up here speaking <laughs> from a place of perfection. I come from a crazy background. My mom was married six times, 14 schools, 17 houses. Really? Yeah. I've seen craziness in the biggest way. I'm the first person in three generations of my family to be married, to never cheat, and never get a divorce. That's only the power of God. We have gone through extremely difficult times, not only because we both came from different backgrounds. I'm from Louisiana. I know that's hard to imagine. I know y'all thought I was a Yankee. Uh, and my wife is from California, every bit of it. And, and I'll never forget, uh, you know, when we first met, uh, you know, it was at church, uh, and actually she wasn't a Christian yet. I was a new Christian, and I felt the call of evangelism. <laughs> and I want to evangelize, uh, and thank God I didn't. The Lord touched my wife, saved her, and then I wanted to disciple her, and he said, no, you'll ruin it. So <laughs> he knew my motives wasn't exactly pure. Uh, because when I saw her, believe it or not, she was the exact dream, better than the dream. When I'd become a Christian, I said, well, I'm a Christian. I want to obey the Bible. And um, can't have sex, so I want to get married. I mean, there's more to it, but come on. I'm going to just be honest. Uh, I don't want to sin against God. If it burns, you get married. All right, so, so I was. I was like, oh, Lord, I really want to be married. I want to share life, and, and I wanted love, not just physical. I wanted love. And I remember that, you know, you know they'd say, get in your prayer closet. And, you know, my, my IQ of 36, I, I, I went and got in a closet. And I took a pen and a pad, and I started writing down what I wanted. Because somebody had said in a Bible study, just really, I mean, be specific in your prayer life of what you want. So I was like, all right, I want a wife. And this is what I want in a wife. And I literally got detailed. I wanted a dark-haired gal who was into fitness 
and un, un, be athletic. And uh, I said, Lord, could she have like some fancy eyes? Because I got brown eyes. And I was like, you know, she had like fancy ones. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, I was like, oh, man. Uh, and it'd be cool if she was a twin. I'm just going to. I wrote it down, a twin. I don't know. I just thought it'd be cool, you know. And uh, sure enough, when I met Eileen, as she walked down, I was, I, was, I was actually already, I was up front at a Calvary praying for people. And, and uh, it was before service, you know, we're praying for people. And then I see her walk in the church. She's walking down. I remember everything went, <laughs> you know, and she's walking And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you know, being a single guy in church, I started looking at all the other single guys. <laughs> well, after we got to know each other and, and, and all of that, and then we, you know, it took her about a year to realize, I <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> and we got sweet on each other. Guess what? She turned out to be my dark-haired, green-eyed, not only in the fitness, she was Miss Fitness USA. And she didn't tell me any of this till way later. She's like, I have to tell you something. I was like, what? Because <laughs> I come from a crazy background. It was like, we've known each other. She goes, I just, I just. I was, uh, I won a contest. I said, well, what? Were you like in prison or something? I don't know. Arm wrestling? And she said, no, I won Miss Fitness USA. And I was like, what? What? And she's like, yeah, you know, I, I did modeling. And, you know, I was a swimsuit model. And did that. I'm like, well, the, I forgive you. And my wife, even in the world, was a very modest woman who uh, was one of the things that impressed me about it. I mean, I remember the first time, you know, I met her family. Uh, I, we're going to go swimming. They have a pool, and it was up, uh, and it was hot, so stinking hot. So we're going to take a dip in the pool. And I'll never forget, I was in the pool house, guest house, and, um, and I remember seeing her walk, her and her sister come across the thing. And she had a bathing suit on. The first time I seen her in a bathing suit. And she just very cute figure. And I was like, I got to do some push-ups. <laughs> and I literally started trying to pump it up, guys. And I'm out there, what's up? Um, <laughs> she had a six-pack more than me. And I was just like, man, this is going to good. But all of that, and with the cherry on top, she had a twin sister. You guys, I just know this, that God desires for you and I to have a relationship with our spouse that's incredible, that's beyond even what you can imagine. But oftentimes, because of the darkness of this world, our background and the influence of the demonic in spiritual warfare, he keeps us from becoming all that we possibly can. Amen? Amen. So, the roles that God has for us, you know, if you've married your spouse, you're married. <laughs> That's them. So, stop believing the lies like, oh, I should have prayed for a twin. <laughs> Don't do the exchange program. Allow God to blossom your relationship as each one of you seek to fulfill the role that he's called you to in that. Does that make sense? And it doesn't matter if you're newlyweds or you're oldlyweds. It, <laughs> I just made that up. Oldly, I'm going to write that down. That's kind of funny. I told you, that 36 IQ. <laughs> Sixth grade was the best eight years of my life. 
But I think as we really fulfill the role that God has called us to be in our marriage, guess what? Your spouse starts to become more attractive. Amen? Yeah. And that's one of the things I loved about my wife, even though we came from pretty different backgrounds, and uh, she had to grow in the Lord as I did. I never forget, we were sitting on a beach, and we were in our courtship phase, and she loved the Lord from the beginning. I mean, just an amazing God of gal. But I'll never forget she said this. I just love Jesus and the Bible, and it's just so amazing. But there's a part where it said, wives, submit to your own husbands. That's weird. <laughs> it's exactly that. This scripture right here. And I went, whoa. The Lord, that's for you to work on. But what we need to do, and she didn't understand at the time, and let's talk about it in a minute, is really what does it mean? Submission. Oh, listen how quiet everybody got. <laughs> the gals are like, yeah. The guys are. <laughs> Don't get scared now, Vic. Bring it, man. Back it up. <laughs> well, first of all, let's go back to the beginning in Genesis. And as a uh, pastor referred to in Genesis chapter 2, 18, that God brought Eve primarily. The role was for her to be a helper, his helpmate. And I tell you what, I've, I've had the privilege of studying and reading and learning from, from everybody because I've had to. In order for us to make it, I've had to have my mind transformed and renewed so I can't follow my, my family's path. Do you understand? So whether it's Dr. James Dobson on Focus on the Family and the years he had in building the family and relationships, I actually had to go to work for him to get it. Yeah. I thought, Lord, I'm so messed up. You placed me here in the ministry with them or Dennis Rainey and family life, or whatever. Grow and learn. You guys have your mind transformed because of the word. And I tell you, I, to know that God brought Adam, Eve, to make her his helpmate. While all of us are called to be helpers to others, the Bible places a special emphasis on the responsibility for wives. Genesis tells us that God realized it wasn't good for man to be alone, and he decided to make a helper suitable for him. Interesting to note that the Hebrew meaning of the word helper in this passage is found hereafter in the Bible by referring only to God as he helps us. The fact that the same word is applied to a wife signifies that the woman has been given tremendous power for good in her husband's life. See, ladies, you are called for great influence in your husband's life. If you look at it that way. And it's not just you submitting to him, being lorded over by him. That's not God's intention. It's for you to understand your value that God has placed in you to say, if you serve in the capacity that I created you to for your husband, your husband will do great things, not only to glorify me, but it will be great for your own family. Does that make sense? Versus this. Because if the wife isn't the helper, she's the herder. Always fighting him. And that's like, no. Ladies, what a role that you have. You're a helper completer. Gals, you're also a life giver. You're the ones that have the sweet baby. You carry life. You nurture. That ain't going to happen with a dude. I mean, I remember our first baby. The baby is like, ah. And I just went, oh. I'm giving back to you right there. Right? <laughs> I said, and, and I said, I'm going to be there for you. I think that was, but that little thing got to get bigger. Because I'm going to break it. Gals, you have the unbelievable ability to nurture. To nurture. You are more of a nurturer than, than the husband. Does that make sense? What power, what influence for good that you have? Second thing is women, your role is to respect your husband. R-E-S-P-E-C. 
Respect your husband. What does that mean? Well, there's a reverence about it. You notice him. You regard him. You honor him. You prefer him. You esteem him. You value his opinion. You admire his wisdom and character and his commitment to you. And you consider his needs and values. Some of you gals, I can hear your mind right now. Uh, he ain't got a lot of wisdom. <laughs> you should see how he does that checkbook. Well, then in your role of influence and helper completer, tell him, honey, would you want me to balance the checkbook and kind of run that? Would that help you? And he'll go, let me think about it. Yeah, okay. You go ahead and do that. I say, yeah, honey, you're the CEO. I'll just be the CFO. <laughs> and it's not in a manipulative way, as I've heard one wife say. He may be the head, but I'm the neck. gals sometimes your perception of a man because of the way men have been conformed to be macho and you know, I got this it, men have needs men have needs we need to be listened to we need you to help us build our confidence in the personhood of our manhood am I right men yeah don't you like your wife to look at you like he's so strong my wife still brings me jars to open, right? Honey, I just can't get this. I'm all, <laughs> and it don't matter if I'm on the computer watching TV. She brings me what? Oh. <laughs> Kids, come on over here. Watch Dad. <laughs> Dad about to break it open. <laughs> Another victory. There you go, chick. Little baby. My wife would back kick me if I did that. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, gals, you're, when, did you, when was the last time you gave your husband just those eyes of, mm. my wife still makes me want to show up for her. The first time we were visiting out of church and we're getting sweet, she came to, uh, I have a background as a martial arts instructor. And I remember she came to the karate school one time. She just comes in, and she's sitting down all cute. And all of a sudden, I became Bruce Lee. I was like, <laughs> what the hell is hanging on right there? It was sparring time. I was beating people everywhere. Pow, 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 pow. It was just a kid's class. I was like, yeah. Gals, men want something to fight for. They want something to conquer. And, 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 and it's for you. If you hold our heart in safety. Uh, we just celebrated 25 years of marriage this year. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And we actually renewed our vows. And when we did, the only people we invited were our children. We have five children, three adults and two little ones, and we let them preside over the vows. And we, we said, y'all, y'all do this. Mom and dad will show up. And they got flowers, and they, they took our rings from us, they give it to us, and then they, each one of our children told us vows that we were to take again. They had their own. Our little, <laughs> one of our kids, will you promise to kiss mom goodnight every night? Yeah. I like that one. I mean, it was amazing. And then each one of our children told us what it meant to them that we've stayed together. Oh, there were tears flowing. And then, because we've come through hard times. We was, we've been separated twice in our marriage. 
One time I loaded her up in the car with the kids and said, <laughs> no, I said, babe, you, you need to go. Because I, I, I suffered severe PTSD, real acute. And uh, when you start taking your K-bar and stabbing it in the walls and writing cuss words and pulling out your rifle and start tweaking, sometimes that is the better road of valor to say, honey, they got me on medication, but we don't know what's going on. Go on up to your mom and her having to trust the Lord with me. You guys and gals, I will tell you right now, the whole idea of submission or allowing your husband to be head of the house and you come in and being subject to him just like he is of the God isn't an issue of trust. And really, so much of it is based on how much you trust the Lord. With the craziness that we've endured, you, 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 you have to just trust God and even allow your husband to make bad mistakes. I mean, we, we came, I had 123 visits to a trauma specialist for my brain. I've been on Depakote, Depakine, Prozac, Zoloft, Lithium. Y'all with me? Yeah. So imagine my wife having to deal with that. There were times she would look at me and say, honey, what you're thinking is not reality. I go, yeah, they're, they're coming to get us. That's why I need this right here. And this right. Honey, it's not reality. And sometimes she would just grab me and kiss me and hold me and say, this is reality. You're loved. The influence of a woman, you got to trust the Lord. Respect your husband and love him. Titus 2, 4, it, it exhorts the ladies to, to love your husband. And part of that love is physical union, is intimacy. And that tends to be one of the really most challenging areas in relationship. And I have people tell me all the time, you know, so, I mean, what's a healthy relationship? You know, if you're going to... Like, you know, how often? And I say five to seven times a week. <laughs> and I wait for them to kind of sputter. <laughs> I go, for some people. Um, but, you know, I think Dr. Dobson, as I said, two to three times a week is a healthy physical relationship because intimacy is so much more than just that. It's, it's glue in your relationship. It's trust. It can be ministering. It can... It's healthy. Do you understand? Gals, we live in a very centralized world. Just sexualize off the charts. And please, don't put your man at risk. And men, shame on you if you're going to porn or this other stuff. Or that, that's nonsense. It's sin. It's destructive. Allow God to make your relationship how he wants. And you may say, oh, it's messed up. We haven't had. Well, trust God. Watch what he can do. Have you ever prayed before? Have you just held hands and said, Lord, men, you know how we like to be close, right? Amen? What are y'all, uh, guys? <laughs> just say amen. Come on. Thank you. You said at the men's conference, now your wife's here. <laughs> amen? <laughs> I'm just really nervous right now, Victor. <laughs> What do you think about me? I got to be out in the foyer afterwards. All these women coming up to me. <laughs> but gals, I will tell you something that my wife says at marriage retreats and women's deals. She said, when my husband travels without me, I make sure he is well loved up before he hits the road. <laughs> the enemy has used sex enough for destructive measures, not only in your life and in your past. So glorify God with it. Does that make sense? And men, be subject to God. If you want to be close to your wife, I have a thing. I, I typically say 99% of the time, when I'm feeling desire, I want to be close to my wife, I just always pray a little prayer, Lord, if it be your will. And then I'm okay. Either way. Most of the time. Now, God has blessed us in unbelievable ways, and 
And I think it's because we kept our relationship pure. Both of us coming from the world, but when we met, we said, no, we're going to honor God this way. And I tell kids that to this day. When I speak in public high schools, which they bring me in as an inspirational speaker, I tell kids, well, the best thing you can do for your sex life is to stay pure and wait till you're married. Guess what? They applaud. They applaud. Kids in, kids in this area. I did a high school, and they applauded because I tell them the outcome of it, apart from marriage, can be very destructive. Very destructive. Let's show the world, celebrate that part of our love in a way that so glorifies God. People in the world go, wow, you really are happy. I never forget, I told a group of young juvenile offenders locked up in this county, and I said, oh, you need to wait, fellas. One guy said, oh, man, this player got to share his love. <laughs> and I said, no, I hear you, I hear you. But I said, that ain't the mark of a man. Mark of a man is loving one woman your whole life, being faithful to her and pleasing her. Come back to me in 25 years when you can say that and you'll know the truth. And he was like, that makes sense. All right. So praise the Lord. Let's switch to you men. Men. Yeah. Listen, guys. In essence, God's called you to be a leader. Some men are natural. Some are not. Some men are strong and natural leaders. Those that aren't, how, how can they really lead their home if they're passive by nature? That's my timer. I got a few more minutes. <laughs> Paul says the same to everyone. God has placed a husband in the position of responsibility. Men, you're to lead courageously. Reject passivity. Lead. Leadership is not fun all the time and it's not about being popular say amen when your house is in chaos when you got kids upside down when you got teenagers being vessels of the wicked one okay <laughs> i don't know what else to say and maybe your wife's you know got the umbilical cord and trying to control everybody and oh please man sometimes you just got to stand in the gap and say hey this is the way the cow eats the cabbage i love all of y'all this is what's going to happen. And pray God give you wisdom. And not rule with a hardship, not put down people. Do you understand? No, no, I'm not talking about that. It's servant leadership. You serve your family, but sometimes you have to make hard calls in love. And tell your daughter when she's walking out, hey, 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 uh, 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 no. Get back in there and I'll knit you something right now. <laughs> take the curtains off the wall and just <laughs> get Arabic on you, girl. I'll put a little thing on your head. <laughs> By the way, one of my adult daughters is here, and uh, her first real boyfriend, and uh, she's in her 20s, but you know what? He's a, he's a good young man. He came and asked me permission to date my daughter. Uh, uh, there are still young knights out there who are willing to honor and do the right way. But we have to keep the bar high. Do you understand, men? Lead right and put the fear of God in them, young men. I just simply said, you know my background? Yes, sir. I said, anybody who hurts my daughter, they're going to die and be dismembered. But not in that order. And he just tapped me. He said, I completely understand. I said, good. I hope it works out. All right. So, <laughs> man, we need to lead courageously. Reject passivity. Huh. Second thing, man, you got to love your wife unconditionally. Unconditionally. I mean, we, li we live in a world that, oh, my goodness, it's, uh, it's ridiculous how men are passive and don't lead. It reminds me of the story of uh, it was a sign up in heaven. Men were lining up, and this big sign said, all those men who've been dominated by their wives stand here. The line of men just stretched off for infinity. And then there was a second sign that said, all those who have never been dominated by their wives stand here. And underneath that sign stood one lone man. So one of the guys on the other one, he couldn't believe it. He walked over to him, and he asked him, he said, man, I just got to know, 
what's the secret? How did you do it? I mean, the other line has millions of men, and you're, yet, you're the only one who, standing in this line that said you weren't dominated by your wife. The man looked around, kind of puzzled, and said, I, I'm not sure. My wife just told me to stand here. <laughs> so, men, you got to reject passivity. Be a servant leader. <laughs> The key to be a great leader in your home is to be under subjection to God Almighty. Are you? I'm asking you right now as a man, is your life under the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Do you know Jesus Christ? Have you ever surrendered your life to him as a man and said, God, forgive me of my sin. I surrender all I am and hope to be to you. Make me the husband you want me to be. Make me the dad you want me to be. If you've never done that, you need to today. That's the best thing you can do. So here you are with the responsibility to reject passivity, be a leader, love your wives unconditionally. Because you know what? Let her know what her worth is. She is God's gift to you. And sometimes you may not feel that, but it's still the truth. Do you know when I don't feel a certain way how I combat it? I love my wife even more. I just say it out loud. I love my wife. Best thing ever happened to me. I, I, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I love my wife. I love my wife. That's just my wife to me. She says, honey, thank you. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You've made me, you've increased my prayer life. You've, you, you've made me really want heaven so bad at times. And I just said, you're, you're welcome. What what did she mean by that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Serve your wife, love her unconditionally, let her know her value. You know, for our 20th anniversary, I did something that we we couldn't really afford, but I did it anyway. Sometimes, man, you just got to get nuts. 20th anniversary, I went and bought 20 dozen roses, red roses, and had them in our house. My wife came downstairs, and she was like, and she said, Honey, you know, we're in ministry. It's a lot of money. I said, I stole them. (laughs) Our neighbors got no roses, but listen, girl, you got them. 20th anniversary. (laughs) Serve your wife. What I will say about that, gentlemen, is serve your wife in intimacy. Don't make the marriage bed undefiled by going and Just using your wife. Because guess what? Wives know the difference. Everybody's real quiet. (laughs) Man, reflect back to when you were a young man courting your wife and want to marry her and honeymoon, you're going to be... Love your wife. Minister to her. Meet her needs. Put her needs above yours. Women, can you say amen for a minute? Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Guys are like, wow, I didn't even know she had a need. <laughs> yep. One of the best ways you can serve your wife is to understand her needs and try to meet them. Do you know what your top, your wife's top three needs are right now? Seasons of life determine it. Maybe she's struggling with little ones. Maybe she's wanting to be more of a grandmother. Maybe she wants to play the piano. Maybe she wants to go train with the Navy SEAL and do shooting. (laughs) Like we did last week. So, you know, um, (laughs) last thing is, uh, another way to serve your wife is to provide for her. Man, I think providing for your wife, women need to know that you care and want to provide. They need to have that security of, well, at least my man, he's providing. Also, they need to feel protected. Do you understand? Wives, is that true? Am I just making this up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, wives want to feel like, this is my man. I don't care if he's like this. This is my man. (laughs) Man. I love that little guy. I'm not kidding. Come on. Dude, I, 
All I got to tell you is buy a pistol. Listen, they want to know you can provide. They want to know you can protect. When we were first married, my wife was pregnant, first baby, and uh, she had gone down. We had a karate school in this little strip mall, and she went down, and she was trying to do some business at, a, of all things, a copy place. And the guy who owned it, my wife said, I don't really know, and he belittled her. A, don't belittle a pregnant woman, right? And my wife at that time, she was just kind of stunned. She was stunned because he was like, can't, you, you can't. And so she just walked out. She came back, and she was crying. My, and I was like, what, what's wrong? Is it the baby? <laughs> what? <laughs> she said, no, this guy just really just belittled me. And I said, oh, my. Um, what does he look like? <laughs> and she told me. I walked over there. I remember walking into the business said, hey, buddy, uh, could I talk to you? He goes, what do you need? Everybody turned around and said, uh, I need to talk to you outside. And I walked outside and said, uh, do you remember that little pregnant gal that was in here? You, man, you really belittled her. That's disrespecting a, a gal, which is wrong. And it's really wrong because it's my wife. And it's really, really wrong because she's pregnant. And it's really, really wrong because I'm a black belt. And then he tried to posture. But let me tell you what. I said, ooh, your hand's up my face. That's kind of a sign of assault. If I was you, I'd put them in your pockets right now. And he goes, ooh. And anyway, he apologized to my wife. That all worked out good. Uh, <laughs> provision. I remember we were first married, and uh, we've had lots of money in our life. <laughs> we've had good businesses. We lived in Hawaii. We know wealth, and we know you know, God's provision and ministry of, woo. <laughs> all right, Lord. And you got, God is the one that's faithful. You seek him, right? But I'll never forget, we were praying for our second baby, and we needed diapers and milk. And I was waiting on a paycheck as a young man working at a health club. And i never forget, I, I went over to my brother's house. This was down in Louisiana. I said, man, I got to get some money real fast. Can I borrow your line more? He, and my brother knows me. He's now president of an oil company. He got rich. And he said, uh, <laughs> said yeah, more's in the back, and the gas. I said, I'll pay you back for the gas. He goes, you don't have to. And I took that more and that can. I went door by door in that neighborhood. And I said, hey, I'm waiting on a check. I get it in two weeks. Can I mow your lawn? Man, you got to be willing to do whatever it takes to provide for your wife. Don't you dare sit at home drinking a 40 and clicking the can on. I think it was Will Rogers that said, our country needs cleaner minds and dirtier hands for hard work. Well, last thing I'm going to say, and I'm out of here. This has been so good. I'm enjoying this day, is if you don't think that there's a real literal devil with demons that are assigned to you and your wife, you had better wake up. Spiritual warfare against godly marriages is probably the biggest attack and risk ever. And if you don't believe it's real, guys, wake up. Because you maybe want to protect your woman against them. Uh, let me tell you what, you better protect her and your family against the demonic. One time my wife was struggling and she was just being, she was having a hard time and the Lord showed me. He showed me in a vision she was being attacked by demonic forces. And I felt helpless because I was like, well, make them appear so I can rip their eyes out, Lord. <laughs> he said, no, you get on your knees and you intercede for your wife right now. That's where the battle is, gentlemen. I'm going to show this quick video. <laughs> that uh, How many of you have not seen the film on our story? Raise your hand if you have not seen our film. Okay. All right. Uh, well, we wrote a book, and it was a film that was done on our life story, and it is one of the most amazing love stories because of what God can do. But well, we did an opening scene uh, for the film, and it's called Marriage is Worth Fighting For. And I just want to walk you through it for uh, one moment. And you better believe you need to cleave to your husband and wife when you're married. 
Now this is interesting. Metaphorically, we believe these are demonic forces that would come against our marriage. One floor. I'll get it. First Peter 5 8 says, be alert and sober mind. Come on, let's play it. Give me your money and the lady too. Remember this one, John 10? Buddy, 10. you can have the money, but uh, I don't think you want the lady. No, honey, that's not what I meant. No, honey, I wasn't meaning that in a derogatory. Uh, no. Say no more. I'm sorry. What do you think this is, a joke? I said give me your money. You sure this is what you want? What do you think? I put the scripture up there again. It's <laughs> Kids. Compliment your wives. Compliment your wives. <laughs> I told you, you didn't want the lady. <laughs> Honestly, on that last move, I don't even know what to say what she just did there right there. You guys. Just know the warfare is real, but you stand in the authority that Christ has given you. You can have victory. Amen?